Hi everyone, Renee here, and thank you for coming back for the second part of my Drunk Elephant review. I've actually really enjoyed splitting my one brand reviews into two videos because I really get to respond to some of your concerns and questions from the first video. So before I continue reviewing the rest of the products, I really feel it's important for me to address a few things specifically concerning the C Firma. I've gone through about five of these and I've always understood what I addressed in the last video, which is that there is going to have a little bit of a hue, a golden amber hue to this. And it's a result of the anti-irritant ingredient that I posted as well as turmeric. So when I first used my most recent purchased bottle which you saw me pump out next to my um, expired bottle or oxidized the one that I've already been using for five months I was actually really surprised at how light it looked I was confused because I was thinking was it always this light I didn't expect such a big difference between this one and my five-month-old one and then I posted the picture on Instagram there were a lot of comments from you guys saying that your serums were just not that clear so I did ask Tiffany Masterson if I was just going crazy or is this a lot lighter than it's ever been and Tiffany being the most accessible and transparent transparent person sort of explained the story to me. She also explained it in the comments under that specific post that I made in Instagram, which I'm going to link down below because I feel like if you're concerned, you should read it. Important thing to note is that the two ingredients that do have that golden hue, turmeric and that other long one, those ingredients will also darken in water in time, exclusive of whether or not there's oxidization of the L-ascorbic acid. So a lot of us, when we first buy this, it will have that amber light golden color. It doesn't necessarily mean the vitamin C is oxidized. But then why is my new bottle of C Firma so light? It's like a, a sort of yellowish, faint yellowish hue. Coloring was still bothering Tiffany. She just couldn't accept it. So they managed to vastly improve the filling process. So now an already protected formula is even further less exposed um, to air. They're also producing these in smaller batches more often for best results possible. So you're gonna find that these new batches are gonna come lighter and clearer in color. They have actually not changed this formulation at all. They're not using less of any of the ingredients that do cause color because they believe those are important components for this formulation. So that basically explains the difference between the new batches and the previous ones. They're not trying to sell oxidized product that is gonna do nothing for your skin or will do nothing for your skin in a month of use. They're a young company that continues to evolve with the needs of the consumers. The packaging is still evolving and now their manufacturing process is getting even more efficient to give us better product that lasts longer. If you recently got one of these and the serum is the amber color from the older batches rather than the pale honey color, then please feel free to contact Drunk Elephant if you're not happy with that. They've offered to replace it for you for one of the newer batches. I have to say that I have never come across a brand that cares as much about their customers as Drunk Elephant. Most brands will reply me in maybe about two weeks. Many just don't reply at all. I'm so blown away by their accessibility, their responsiveness, and I believe that has everything to do with the fact that it was created by someone who is a consumer, just like us. So finally, let's talk about the Be Hydra Intensive Hydrating Gel. I think for many, this might be an ambiguous product if you're not accustomed to the concept of layering hydration in your skincare routine. This to me is a hydrating lotion, so I'll use this exactly where I would use the Hada Labo, which is after serum, right before oil or moisturizer. This is also the product that you can use to mix with anything else in this line or just anything else. Whatever you feel needs that extra boost of hydration, just mix it in there. I actually use this with the TLC from Booze, and it really sort of helps take that edge off. This is very different from the SkinCeuticals B5, the Hada Labo, or the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid um, Serum. This is a gel rather than liquid form like the other guys, but also this has the addition of some really luxurious plant ingredients. So it's a little more than just hydrating. It has the smaller molecular weights of hyaluronic acid that sink deeper into your skin layers. This also has the vitamin B for further hydration. It's great for your skin moisture barrier. This also has pineapple ceramides, which help with skin tone and texture. I feel like this ingredient actually makes quite a difference in this, I'll explain later. There's also a hydrating complex of watermelon rind, apple, and lentils, which is really supposed to help your skin retain moisture. This also contains barberry extract, which is meant to be a great ingredient for the acne prone because it's antibacterial, but particularly towards acne causing bacteria. I really feel that this will work particularly well for you if you have combination to oily skin. This will give you the hydration your skin needs so it doesn't have to keep producing so much oil. And for some people, this could suffice as a moisturizer. You don't really need anything over this other than maybe sunscreen. When you apply it, it's like a cool, 
refreshing drink of water for your skin. That is really how it feels. But then the finish is a very smooth and non-sticky one. And it's another thing that differentiates this from the liquid forms. And I don't know if it's the pineapple ceramides in here or what, but it really makes your skin feel like it's retexturized, like you've been washing it with rice bran. The surface of your skin is completely smoothed out and it's slightly mattifying even. And it does this without any silicones in the formula, which is mind boggling. Even when you're applying multiple layers of this, at some point it feels like it's getting sticky, but it dries down to a completely smooth matte finish. I still find myself reaching more for the Hada Labo lotion, mainly because I prefer the wetness of the formula. When I use that, I will get that radiant glow of hydration. And because my skin tends towards the dull side, I love that glow. So I bought this on account of how enticing the name of it was. I mean, whipped cream has endless appeal. So the packaging has changed. When I first got this, it was in a tub and now it's an airless pump. This formula has a blend of six antioxidant rich African oils, as well as fermented green tea seed oil, which is in the Amori Pacific products. And even looking at it when it first dispenses, it is a very emollient kind of cream. However, when you apply it, it turns into this smooth, creamy, light texture. And there's this unexpected cooling effect when you're applying this. It's actually quite soothing and calming. The rate of absorption is also lightning fast because there is nothing even remotely greasy about this formula. Your skin will be left feeling velvety soft and completely matte. No oiliness, no slip, no shine, matte. In fact, there's even a bit of this like tightening effect. I definitely feel my skin tightening up when I have this on. So unlike a lot of equivalently rich creams, you could actually apply makeup on over this and not worry about it just kind of sliding off. The whole mattifying and drying effect of it is a little uncomfortable for me. So personally, when I use this, it makes my skin feel and certainly appear drier. It isn't drier, but it certainly looks drier. So I need a little bit of grease. I've even tried this with the marula oil, but the mattifying effect overrides the effects of the oil. I feel like this would work so well for combination to oily skin. So this is not best suited for me, although I have recommended and given this to some of my combination to oily skin friends who are looking for like a substantial moisturizer with anti-aging benefits that's nourishing and they all love it. So the Shaba Complex Eye Serum I reviewed in my eye creams and serums video. I will link that down below. I feel like the packaging got recently updated because it looks very different to me right now. I don't believe it comes anymore in this sort of pen slash injection form, which actually I really like. The ingredients in the serum are just straight up amazing and it is completely completely weightless. It disappears in this area around your eye, which is really important for an eye serum because you don't want there to be a buildup which could eventually cause milia. If you're someone who feels like you already have milia, then this is a great treatment to use on its own because it's so potent, but then it's so lightweight that it won't really sit on top of your skin and further exacerbate um, the whole situation. I use these on my eyelids as well. I think this is actually perfect for that. My eyelids are very oily, whereas my under eyes, the skin under here is very, very dry. So a lot of times you can't really put eye creams on this area because it just gets heavy, greasy, more oily, but you get none of that with this. People say there's no reason to put eye cream around here. I feel there is. I feel there's a great need to nourish this area here. The Unbrush Sheer Physical Defense was such a surprise to me. This has a broad spectrum SPF of 30. I mean, seriously, I just like to know what the UVA protection is. I think that's something that really needs to change here in the US. So clearly this is a completely physical sunscreen that uses a whopping 20% zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is one of the most effective sun blockers and it's also a dream ingredient for all of you normal to oily skin people. Quite frankly, I didn't expect this to work for me at all because it's just so physical and pure and wholesome. I was certain that this was gonna give me that typical sort of chalky white cast on my face and it would be really, really drying. So imagine my surprise, especially when this first comes out of the tube, it's got that typical very thick white texture, which honestly, after you keep patting it into your face, 
it does really disappear. Not completely though, there is still a very slight white cast. So if you have a darker skin tone, this might show up, but they've said that you actually don't need massive amounts of this. You only need to apply enough to form a thin layer over your skin. I use this after all my skincare. A lot of sun blocking ingredients are very occlusive, so they are there to sit on top of your skin and form that shield that will just sort of deflect all the sun rays. I always wait a little bit after applying sunscreen or before applying makeup, but apparently this formula can be actually mixed with anything else here, and the formula will not be diluted. Um, it's still uncomfortable for me to do that anyway, but again, that's just my own psychological thing. It says this is meant for sensitive skin because it doesn't use chemical filters, although I still get stinging and irritation from very strong and high amounts of physical filters as well. That it uses so much zinc oxide, which is actually known as an astringent. I feel like there's a belief out there that physical sunscreens are just great for sensitive skin. I feel like no sunscreens are great for sensitive skin. This is also meant to give you that glowy radiance that comes from sunblock filters. If you have oily skin or combination skin, this will be a dream for you and you will get that effect. But for me, nothing beats the radiance that comes from the chemical sunscreens. There's absolutely no greasiness to this, which I know appeals to so many of you. In fact, it's pretty mattifying. This is a skincare sunscreen, so the formula is also full of antioxidants, as well as marula oil, raspberry seed oil, algae, aloe, just a bunch of really lovely ingredients. Lip is an absolutely gorgeous and luxurious skin treatment. This is nothing like the chapstick or those overrated um, lip products that come in the shape of a ball. You can tell the minute you apply it that this is made out of luxurious ingredients. It feels like butter. It's beautifully soothing. It coats beautifully. It's not sticky in the least. It's kind of like applying the most gorgeous lip oil, but it's just not as greasy. This is very lightweight, but it actually stays on your lips for a long time. It doesn't disappear really quickly like a lot of lip oils do. And personally, I love the size of this because you can pretty much cover both lips, or at least I can cover both lips with one swipe, but it also really gets the top lip line, which for me is always the most sensitive and irritated. This formula is full of gorgeous rich oils, shea butter, you can put it on other areas of your skin that's very dry. If you have a cold, you can put it around your nose. Yeah, this is, I love it. Their most recent release is the TLC Sukari Baby Facial. This is the Framboose on steroids. I love that this is powder pink because it's a baby facial. This comes packaged with the mini marula oil, which is just perfect. They are definitely a good couple. I waited for this product to launch before I would do this review, and I was absolutely petrified to use it, like legitimately fearful. I've talked about my complicated relationship with acids that are a fraction as strong as this, and I mean, this is just straight up scary. That 25% AHA blend, I can imagine that you'll be able to get your hands on this in some countries like Canada, and 2% salicylic acid. This is different from the framboos in that it's not intended as a nightly treatment. This is a once a week treatment at most. You're supposed to leave it on for 20 minutes and then rinse it off. So this will resurface your skin, blast away those dead skin cells to reveal your baby soft skin underneath. This has a pH of around 3.5, and because it's such a high percentage of AHAs, this will also brighten up your skin in a big way. This will really help with your post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, any sort of red spots you might have. Like the other formulations, this is full of antioxidants as well as soothing agents to really calm the skin down and a lot of hydrating ingredients to replenish the skin. So before using this, for a good 10 days, I put my skin on like an elimination diet, just a very, very clean diet. No ingredients that could possibly sensitize my skin. Even the vitamin C I was using was a much weaker derivative because my experience, nothing will tell me that my skin is being sensitized by products better than acids. So they recommend that you start slow. Start off with maybe 10 minutes and work up to 20. So I started by using this on the areas of my face that are a lot less sensitive. So the first time I used this, I kept this on for seven minutes and I have to say, there was really no irritation. There was definitely tingling, but it was not in a burning or irritation type of way. It was just sort of like in a normal acid way. It was a surprise for me. I was all geared up for some possible screaming. So after rinsing, my skin felt very soft, very smoothed. I followed up immediately with the marula oil and I just kind of left it at that. The next day when I was doing my skincare routine and I was applying my products, it was like I was applying it to glass. Everything was just gliding on so smoothly. There was also quite significant brightening. A few spots where some fresh zits had been were significantly lighter. 
I mean, there are a lot of additional brightening ingredients as well. She uses chickpea flour instead of clay because it's just far gentler on your skin. There's also niacinamide. So I want to say that at one point, I did introduce a 30% vitamin C product into my evening routine. That week when I used this treatment, on first application, I applied it here, aggressive tingling so aggressive it was very uncomfortable i had to wash it off immediately if you're someone with skin a bit on the sensitive side i don't feel that means you can't use a product like this i feel it just means that you need to make sure that you are not further sensitizing your skin with existing products honestly and this is really rare i can't say anything bad about any of these products here. So my picks are gonna be very personal and have everything to do with my skin type and my own preferences. So do keep that in mind. I'm gonna start off with this and this shouldn't be a mystery to anybody out of all the like vitamin C serums out there. This is definitely my favorite. It's also got a moisturizing element. So for those of you who have oily skin, you might actually find this a little oily and heavy, but for me, it's wonderful. The Virgin Marula has become absolutely indispensable Sensible to me. I've been using it throughout this winter and I have to say there is a luxury element to this. Other marula oils in my experience tend to be greasier and heavier whereas in my video you can see that this has the consistency of water. It's very thin, very small molecular so it sinks into your skin really quickly. This really gives me this glow without the greasiness. I love mixing it with my hydrating lotion or with this B5. It really holds the moisture in. Of course, I would love to review this against the Ordinary Marula Oil, but that's been sold out for about two months and I'm not getting any notifications that it's back in stock. So the minute I get my hands on it, you better believe I will be reviewing them. The other product that I will repurchase is the Shaba Eye Serum because I just feel like it's the perfect serum to layer under other eye creams. Out of the two TLCs, if I had to get one, I would get this one over that. I think this is a more special product, and I like the fact that it's like a weekly treatment. It's not a daily one. When you use this, the results are undeniably there. Now, I know The Ordinary has their 30% acid solution. I haven't received mine yet, but I will absolutely review it when I get it. Honestly, the idea of acids going higher up in percentage is only just more terrifying for me. This lip product is also a favorite of mine. It took me some time to actually get it, but when I did, I just can't get enough. I actually also really appreciate this and I have repurchased this even though it's not the best for my skin type. Um, it's better for oily skin where it, this is actually a dream come true for you guys. I actually really love using this on my neck and on my hands because it gives all the nourishment, the protection without any of the invasive greasiness. Well, that's it for my Drunk Elephant review. I hope you were able to find this helpful and informative. I know some of these products can be quite a splurge because this is a luxury brand. So I hope you got the information you need. Perhaps if you had your eye on something, you are now able to decide whether it's worth it for you or not. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.